he copy? Do you copy? Is this the Chinese station? Is this Tiangong? Copy. Mayday. Can you copy? Mayday. 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 Yes, yes. Mayday. 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 Honey, can I say? Is that your... Is that your name? Honey Gang is your is your name? Is that your name? I don't know. No. no, my name is not Mayday. I'm Stone. Dr. Ryan Stone, I need help. I am Those are dogs. You're calling for Earth. You're calling from Earth. <laughs> Uh, uh, I got Make your dogs bark again for me, would you please? You dogs. Dogs, you know. Woof woof. Dogs. Oh. 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 Oh, woof woof. Oh, woof woof. Oh. Oh, I'm dying, honey guy. I know, we're all gonna die. Everybody knows that. <laughs> But I'm gonna die today. It's funny that, you know, to know. But the thing is, it's that I'm still scared. I'm really scared. Nobody will mourn for me, no one will pray for my soul. Will you mourn for me? Will you say a prayer for me? Or is it too late? <laughs> uh, I mean, I'd say one for myself, but I've never prayed in my life, so. <laughs> Nobody ever taught me how. <sighs> Nobody ever taught me how. I used to sing to my baby. And I hope I see her soon. Dr. Ryan Stone is a biomedical engineer aboard the NASA's space shuttle explorer. A Russian missile strike on, on a satellite causes a chain reaction, forming a cloud of fast moving debris in space. Dr. Stone is the sole survivor and tries to return to Earth by a landing capsule from International Space Station and Chinese Space Station. In this scene, Dr. Stone loses all her hope and speaks to herself while waiting until the oxygen runs out. We're coming back to Romans as we have been studying Romans throughout uh, this uh, semester. 
I want to begin this message with the story of Job in the Old Testament. Job is also often called the righteous sufferer. Long ago in ancient Mesopotamia, there was a righteous man who feared God, whose name is Job. Job had seven sons and three daughters, and Job had 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 donkeys, and a large number of servants. Job was the, the greatest man among all the people of the East. One day Satan came to God's council. God boasted about his faithful servant Job, how righteous he is. Satan challenged God and argued the only reason why Job worship, worships God is because of all the material blessings given to him. Once they were taken away, Satan argues that Job would curse God. God allowed Satan to take Job's possessions and even his children. Job fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from mother, my mother's womb. Naked I will depart. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be blessed. Satan came back to God and argued that once Job's help is taken away, he will certainly curse God. God allowed Satan to take Job's help, and Job struggled with the painful sores from his feet to the top of his head. Even Job's wife said to him, Are you still holding on to your integrity? Curse God and die. Job replied to his wife, you're talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? Job didn't sin in what he said. Job passed a long period of God's testing. God doubly blessed Job than before, restoring all his health and wealth and children. There is the so-called Deuteronomistic theology that runs through the Old Testament and its simplistic presentation is this. If you obey the law, God will bless you. If you read a lot of uh, uh, Deuteronomy and uh, Kings and 1st and 2nd Samuel, you can see this kind of um, theology all, all through. The book of Job balances this Deuteronomistic theology, highlighting that sometimes the righteous do suffer for some unknown providence of God. According to Miroslav Bolt, who is a prominent, prominent Christian theologian today, the story of Job concerns this this fundamental question, whether or not a human being can exist without the connection to the transcendental God. Satan tempts Jesus after 40 days of fasting in the wilderness. If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. Jesus answered, it is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Of course, without bread, no one will survive. But can we live by bread alone? I went to uh, this big, crazy bakery called uh, 85 degrees Celsius. They just opened a location in Pasadena. And uh, I couldn't believe, okay, so many people are waiting for this particular bread. Susan, what was it? Brioche. Brioche? Brioche. 
brioche. Okay. Brioche. I couldn't believe everybody was waiting for this bread. And how was it? So then, <laughs> happy. Is it worth waiting? Yeah, yeah. Brioche, even brioche. Can we live by brioche alone? No. You know, if we eat the same bread every day, by second or third day, we will be probably sick of it. Satan's greatest temptation today is to make us believe that we can live by bread alone. You don't need God. You know, you need your food, you need your luxuries and iPhones and you're good to go. Why do you need your faith? Why do you need religion? But the word of God says, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And we live in this country that is so greedy, so consumeristic, so capitalist. And there are so many things that are wrong in this, in this country today. And we don't have to talk about anybody else. To talk, to think about the danger of materialism. It's all, all over in this society and around us. And I'm, I'm doubting that. I'm thinking, you know, the the warnings against the Laodicean church in Revelation three is so relevant today. Churches today, Christians today, we are so lukewarm, and we think that we are rich. But in reality, we are spiritually wretched, pitiful, poor, and blind. Many of us live so comfortably, but how many of us, if we are so honest with ourselves, are willing to give up our American dreams to follow God's dreams? Jesus says in Mark 8:39. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. So says Paul today in, first, in Romans chapter 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, that has been given to us. By starting this passage with therefore, Paul summarizes what he has been talking about in his first four chapters and gives his readers the implications of the righteousness of God by faith in Jesus Christ. We have peace with God through Jesus Christ. We have obtained access to God's grace in which we stand. We boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. Yes, we already have been saved by God's grace, but the full extent of God's salvation will be experienced only on the day of Jesus Christ where when we stand before God and see Christ face to face. Not only that, we also boast in our sufferings because suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character and character produces hope. I believe all of us want to become like Christ in character. 
But who wants to suffer? I believe that everybody needs PhD. I'm not talking about permanent head damage, but personal humility development. When I see myself and us in this congregation, I see lack of lack of trust and care, that love. How much do we love each other? How much do we love the unlovable? Joy. Do we are we really experienced experiencing the joy of the Lord that has no condition? Peace. Do we have this transcendental peace that cannot be altered? Patience. How patient are we with each other, with our family and friends? Kindness. What's the extent of kindness that we experience that we give to others? Generosity. Faithfulness. How faithful we are. Gentleness. Oh, this is a good one. After Thanksgiving, self-control. I pray for more sufferings so that you and I can become more like Christ in character and reflect the righteousness of God that Paul is talking about. Not just the believing in Jesus Christ, but really being Jesus Christ in those situations. Hope does not disappoint us because the love of God is poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Paul continues, For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps uh, for a, a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. God demonstrates his love for us in that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. We boast in God through Jesus Christ. What is our boast? Is it making six digits? Having a powerful position in a corporate America? Or is it having a very large house with a pool? Driving a luxury car? Or is it having advanced degrees that impress people? Or is it having many followers so popular on social media? No. Our boast is being made righteous before God through Jesus Christ. No. Our boast is our future bodily resurrection on the day of Jesus Christ. No. Our boast is our sufferings that will ultimately produce some of us are like Dr. Ryan Stone, stranded in a capsule in space. All communications are lost. You have no power to maneuver your capsule. The oxygen level is rapidly going down. Your body is freezing cold. You will slowly slowly losing your consciousness consciousness what would be the last place 
Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the Lord, name of the Lord be praised.